what I will do today is uh, talk about a, a, a project which we run in the Netherlands for the last uh, 10 years. And it's, uh, it's called NLT, stands for Nature, Life and Technology. And it's a, a Dutch science course on, in which we pay a lot of attention to new developments in science and technology in senior secondary education. So that's age 16 to 18. But before I describe the course itself, um, I would like to, to give you a bit of an idea of the setting. I'm not going to explain the whole Dutch educational system because you won't like that. Um, I'm just uh, talking about the kind of students uh, the course is addressing itself to. Uh, you should take into account that in the Netherlands, uh, at an early age, in my view at a too early age, the kids are separated into vocational schools and general education schools. About 50% of the, the students go to general education and they prepare themselves for going to university or to college. Um, now, out of these uh, 50%, you find 50% um, of these, they opt for science streams. In the past, it was far less, and that's increasing at the moment. So about one quarter of the, the students um, in age, uh, age 15 to 18, they're the ones the course uh, addresses itself to. Now, in, in the Dutch educational system, uh, you have to do um, exams in a number of uh, topic, in a number of subjects. All students have to do English, Dutch, and one other language, uh, not Portuguese, but it might be German or French or even uh, Russian, or and some schools even Chinese. Um, then for the science streams, math and chemistry are mandatory. They all have to do uh, to sit exams in um, in uh, mathematics and in chemistry. Physics and biology, they can opt for physics and biology. But if you look at the entrance qualifications at university level, you'll find that they have to do both biology and uh, physics if they want to go, for instance, for, for medical studies. And then there are some elective subjects. They have to do one additional um, science subject, might be uh, uh, IT, uh, might be design, uh, might be uh, uh, physical geography. Um, and another thing you have to take into account is in the Netherlands, and that might be the case, I think, in many European countries, is that in senior secondary school, the subjects are taught separately, in separate disciplines. So separate physics, separate mathematics, etc. And only very few teachers are teaching more than one course. And that means that in the schools, you'll find uh, departments which don't cooperate. You have the, the mathematics people, the biology people, the, the physics people, and they think of the other ones as uh, strange people uh, with whom you can't cooperate. Um, so it's, it's quite separate. That's a tradition in Dutch uh, secondary schools. Now, if you look outside, um, in the world outside schools, and of course that's important uh, because you are preparing your students for the world outside school, then you see that many of the, um, many of the issues that you find in the newspapers, on the television, etc., there are interdisciplinary issues. If you look at health, climate, uh, food, uh, environment, um, those are not topics you can cover only by physics or mathematics or chemistry. If you look at the research world, um, for instance, in my faculty of science, it's a, it's a big faculty with about um, one and a half thousand staff members and 5,000 students. Um, many of the research institutes they don't have only physics, physicists or chemists or biologists. You'll find them working together. So that's also the case outside my university and in a, 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 a separate research establishment. A lot of the research but at the moment is interdisciplinary. Then if you look at employers, employers, they fear a shortage of STEM educated people. So they, they really press the government to invest a lot of money into science education programs, which of course is nice for, for my, myself and my colleagues. And uh, the, the language people are a bit jealous on us because we get so much money in order to, to promote uh, STEM education. Uh, but there is a shortage, so we really have to pay attention to that. What you also find from industry, uh, and I recently visited uh, Philips, is a, a big company in the Netherlands, in the past uh, mainly dealing with light, um, and they only had physicists. At the moment, they have lots of people from various backgrounds in their research uh, institute. And what they want, want to have are not people who are specialized only in one discipline. 
and have no idea of what's happening outside their own discipline. What they need are people with what they call with a T-profile. That means in depth you have to know one discipline very well, but you also should be a bit familiar with which, what is happening outside your own discipline. Uh, that means you have to be able to cooperate, you have to be interested in other, uh, in other disciplines. And then if you look at higher education, then you see that um, uh, in the past we only had uh, separate uh, programs on chemistry or physics or mathematics or biology. And by now you see many interdisciplinary programs like uh, molecular life sciences, uh, climate science, uh, food science. Uh, many of the programs are interdisciplinary at the moment. So there is in fact a gap between what's happening in secondary schools and what's happening in, in the world outside uh, schools. And uh, the, the program I was involved in, I'm still involved in, um, is trying to, to close this gap. So this, is, this new subject, uh, Nature, Life and Technology, it has two main aims. One aim is that we want to uh, increase the coherence between the subjects. We don't want to have this separation. It doesn't mean that we want to, to stop uh, disciplinary teaching. Um, I, I don't think it's a good idea to say we make it all general science, a general STEM uh, course, because I think then it will, you will lose depth. You need people who are specialized in certain fields, but they have to be able to cooperate at school level. And also we want to make uh, STEM careers more attractive for, for students. And we think we can do that by showing them what is happening at the moment in, in, in research um, and technology development um, outside the schools. So we, um, in fact, the idea started in the, in the fall of 2005 and we had to go for, for reasons I'm not going to explain, but there was some pressure that we started in August 2007 with this new course. It's a course which is elective uh, for upper secondary students, so they don't have to choose it, they can do it. Um, and they do it on top of the, the separate courses which they already have on mathematics, chemistry, physics and biology. Schools are not obliged to offer NLT. And one reason for that is that we set special conditions for these schools. And if, if all schools would, uh, would be forced to offer this, uh, this course, then there will be problems. We had that in the past with an, another science course which we offered in schools. And then uh, teachers were unprepared, were not willing to teach it. The headmaster said, you go and teach this course. And then this teacher said to the students, I have to teach this course, I don't like it, but I have to do it by the headmaster. And that's not a way to stimulate students to attend your course and to be very active. So we leave it to the schools to opt uh, for offering this course. It's a school-based examination. And in the beginning, there was a lot of pressure, also from teachers, who said, make it a national examination, because the status of your course will be higher if there is a national examination. But we, we didn't want to do it. Um, and the reason by not offering a national examination is that if you do that, you limit a lot the teachers to teach in class. Because teachers at the moment are already very much pressured by the national examination program. So we want to give teachers freedom. And, and that you do by, uh, by not making a national examination, but giving the, um, um, leaving it to the teachers to assess uh, what the students have been doing. Uh, under special conditions, which I will show later. And there was a national steering committee which started it all in 2005, uh, and I was chairing this uh, committee, I'm still, still chairing it. Now, so what we want to do is we, we bring in new developments in science and technology. Um, we want to integrate biology, chemistry, earth science, mathematics and physics. So not only the sciences, also mathematics, because especially mathematics tends to be very separated uh, in schools from, uh, from the other, um, from, from, from the sciences. It is an advanced course, that means we're going to introduce new concepts which had never been in schools before, and we are applying the concepts which have been in the national examination programs to new contexts which were not settled in schools before. And we offer a lot of choice to teachers, which I will, I will show you what kind of choices. Now the challenge was, it is a new subject, there are no lesson materials at all available. It is a very wide area. If you, if you take the whole STEM area, there are really 
about maybe 100 different directions uh, on which you could try to, to cover. So you need a lot of materials if you want to cover the whole field of science and technology, all kinds of research and technology that's going on, all kinds of courses at university level. Um, it's a very wide area. Also, the teachers are not familiar with these new developments. I mean, they read newspapers, they listen to TV programs, uh, they may read articles, but they're not really specialists in the new fields. And experts, they are not familiar, usual, with teaching at the secondary level. So it's not easy to say, leave it to the teachers to develop these courses, or leave it to the experts to develop the materials, because that's not going to work. So what we, di what we did was, first we consulted um, higher education experts um, about potential topics. So we talked with people from universities, from colleges, from industry, and we got the whole field mapped out this is the field of science and technology. Then we, um, we wrote an examination program, which is very global, very, very rough, um, which uh, forces teachers to, to spread the course, uh, the, the modules over the whole of uh, the STEM area, but it leaves it very much freedom to the schools themselves. We, we made development teams. In fact, these teachers um, and experts, they uh, they themselves um, wanted to part uh, participate. Um, we had teachers from different schools and different subjects. Don't leave it to the physics teachers. Don't leave it to the math teachers. Don't leave it to one school. Bring teachers from schools together. And bring them into contact with content experts. Because they have to cooperate. Um, it, if you leave it to the teachers, they stay very close to the, the, the curriculum which they know. And if you leave it to the experts, they, they go far, they go too far, they have no idea what's happening in schools, they, they, do, they, they cannot expect what is possible and not possible in a school, in a setting. So they have to work together. They, they develop test versions, and they were not versions we were going to spread all over the country. Um, what we want them to do is write a test version, which is for the pilot. And then we had at least two schools who were piloting these materials. And after the pilots, the students, they gave their uh, reactions on interviews. Um, and the teachers, they wrote down notes about uh, their experiences. And of course, many things went wrong. Um, we also uh, gave the materials to uh, content experts, which were not involved in writing the materials. So outside experts, um, who, 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 for, for which it was new materials. And they gave a lot of comments. We gave it to science education experts and math education experts who looked at the materials and they gave their comments. And the comments from the students, from the teachers, from the, the content experts and the science education experts were brought together and were given back to the, to the development team to rewrite the materials. And only after rewriting, it came to my steering committee and we certified the, uh, the modules. And usually it takes at least one and a half year to develop a good module. And in some cases, it took three or four years to get modules which we really were able to, uh, to certify because you had to set, have to set high standards. At the moment, we have 77 modules certified and you have to take into account that the module takes 40 students hours. So in fact, students in senior secondary school could spend two years full time on this course which is, is not what we want, and nobody wants that. So it, it gives an idea of the, 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 the choice uh, which teachers can make. Usually, uh, in most schools, um, about uh, eight or nine modules are taught in the period of two, of two or three years. So most of the modules are not taught. Um, in, in, no module is taught by all schools. Some modules are very popular, some are less popular. In developing these modules, we had, about, um, we had more than 150 schools involved in either developing the materials or testing, piloting the materials. And we had experts from 47 institutes who looked at the materials, gave their comments and suggestions for improvement. Examples of the modules. Um, these are only about, I think, 22. So um, about 50 are, are, are not shown here. And you see a large variety. Forensic science, 
about solving a murder case uh, using all kinds of uh, techniques, driving and drinking, which is uh, important at that, for that age group that they understand the, the risk of that, heart, and heart, you, don't, you shouldn't consider this as a biology topic, but because a lot of uh, chemistry and a lot of physics is necessary to understand uh, what's happening in the heart and what's happening when there are problems with the heart. Living in the International Space Station, about gluing, technology of gluing, medical imaging, blue energy, which is in, in my country becoming more important because we get a lot of water from the Rhine to the Netherlands, which is, um, is not salty. The sea is salty, and at the interaction of these two, you can get a lot of uh, energy. And just recently, uh, some theoretical uh, physics colleagues of mine, they calculated that if you increase the temperature difference between the water, which is salt and not salt, the, the effect will be much, uh, much higher. So that shows that even theoretical physicists are involved in this kind of practical uh, problems on energy. Uh, lab on a chip. Um, by now it's possible to do a lot of uh, measurements on blood, for instance, uh, by just bringing a very small sample uh, of liquid into a chip. And they, they use this uh, now in the schools. Dynamic modeling, ice and climate, digital technology, brain and behavior, measuring galaxies, biosensors, medicine development, uh, geographical information system and safety, sports science, air quality, molecular life, food and fuel, molecule gastronomy, dynamic earth, and 50 others. If you're really interested, I, I have a list with me of all the, um, the, uh, the, the modules and with a short description of what's, uh, what's in the modules. Three of those have been translated into English, which are freely available on the internet. Uh, I've got them with me, but you can also look at it um, at the internet and uh, even use it if you want. Implementation. It's a new subject, so you have to fight, fight more or less, to compete with other uh, subjects which are elective. Um, there's no tradition in the schools of interdisciplinary teaching. Um, we only have a little time for the pilots. Um, and quality is important, because a new subject is very vulnerable. My experience is, if you try a new uh, subject, people are very critical, and, and some are against it from right from the beginning, and they try to, to, to get it out. And if you make, if, even if you make a few mistakes, you might get an article in the newspaper of a professor who is against the, the subject, and, and, and it, it might be uh, discarded by the schools. So quality is very important. So what we did was uh, be limited in a way uh, the freedom of the schools. Uh, we said to the schools, um, you cannot teach this course by one teacher. It's impossible. Nobody is able, and I still think that's the case, to teach this course on his own. You have to cooperate. Um, so we required that at least three teachers from different subjects were involved in, in teaching this course. It doesn't mean they have to be there all the time, but they have to, to carry the responsibility for the subject, they have to share the loads of teaching it. Um, three out of five subjects have to be uh, teachers involved. Uh, headmasters should give time for team meetings and for, for support, which the teachers had to give to each other. There must be time for professional uh, development for the teachers, and we, we made the arrangement with the schools that you use at least 75% of the, um, your teaching time, the modules which we certified. Because if you leave it free to the schools to do whatever they want, it's a kind of a dustbin uh, subject and it might vary in quality uh, a great deal. So this is the, the limits which we set. Um, we supported the teachers by teacher guides, so all the modules have teacher guides with suggestions uh, of teaching. And we have set up 10 regional support centers um, where the teachers come uh, together, uh, share experiences, uh, good get uh, training on, on particular topics, good invite guest lectures, etc. Now, what, what did we get from the teachers? Because you cannot develop such a course um, without teachers. What we got from the teachers is they developed modules. No module was developed by people outside uh, schools uh, only. They piloted the modules. They shared experiences with the modules. And important within their schools, they were promoters of this uh, subject to the kids who could choose uh, uh, for this and to uh, convince the headmasters and to convince the parents that this is a good school because we teach this NLT course. 
but I think we also contribute to the professional development of the teachers <coughs> because um, they, they learned for, from developing uh, the modules. They cooperated with experts, so they learned a lot from these experts, <coughs> and I think the experts from them. And they piloted uh, the modules, and they learned from that and by evaluating it. Um, they had a lot of choice in, in choosing modules, um, which gave them commitment, because if you choose a module to teach it, then you are enthusiastic about it and you really go for it. Um, I think they learned from preparing to teach uh, these modules. Uh, that takes a lot of time for teachers to prepare themselves for, for teaching such a module in a new field. Very important, they learned to cooperate with teachers in, uh, in the school. Um, and some schools, they stopped <coughs> teaching NLT because the teachers couldn't cooperate uh, with each other. And if you can't cooperate, you, you shouldn't teach this course. But it means that if teachers talk with each other about this course, they also talk about their own subject. They talk about, how, what are you doing in mathematics? What are you doing in physics about this topic? So it, it brings coherence within the school. <coughs> it gave them also contact with experts because they, uh, they took the kids to uh, uh, research establishment, to industry excursions. They invited people from outside to give guest lectures uh, during uh, teaching the course. And I think they learned a great deal from the regional and the national meetings which we organized, uh, for instance, an annual conference, but also the regional meetings um, about content and teaching methods. Now, a few reactions to students. <coughs> we are still doing research um, on, on what the students are thinking about this course, and these are just a few quotes which for us are important to understand how we could improve um, uh, this course. And one is I advise all the students to take NLT because it is about the connection between different sciences and technology, so it's more like the real world. The second one, NLT showed me my favorite way of learning, which didn't influence the choice of my major, but did influence the choice of my university. In NLT, I discovered that math is about more than high school lessons. So I think the, the relevance of mathematics which is not always clear to, uh, to students. NLT is the most important course I took. I'm going to study physics, astronomy and mathematics, which I wouldn't have done without NLT. Physics in high school is not challenging enough. NLT gave me a sense of real physics. So it gives them insight in what's not really happening at the, front of, uh, at the front of physics. But also, it makes the choice of, my, of an undergraduate program more difficult. You get in touch with a broad scope of science and technology programs, so you might end up with three programs you'd like to choose. So it brings you into a problem because there are so many interesting things to do. Um, now, I, I prefer that kind of problem above that you're not interested at all in science and technology. The, the current situation <coughs> by now, at the moment 220 schools are offering NLT which is 40% of all schools in the country. That, that stabilizes at the moment. Uh, scum, some new schools are entering. Some schools are, are stopping teaching it. Um, but the schools who keep going on, um, they, they are, are very important because they are enthusiastic about it. About 1,100 teachers are involved. As I said before, we required at least three different teachers to work in this course. Now, there are some schools where 11 teachers are involved in teaching the course. So they, they, they bring in all kinds of uh, uh, teachers in the different um, subject uh, uh, modules which they are teaching. So if they teach climate science, they, they bring in the math teacher for, for a few lessons, they bring in the physics teacher, they bring in the biology teacher, the geography teacher. And I think that's, that would be my ideal situation, that in fact the, uh, the, the course is the responsibility of the whole uh, science and mathematics uh, section of the school. We have a national NLT office, uh, office which supports the teachers. Now that's not a big office. This is five people who work one or two days a week um, uh, supporting the schools. We have an annual conference. <coughs> Another important point is if you work in such a field um, in new developments, then if you have a module and thank <laughs> you. If you have a module and you've taught it for five years. In the meantime, uh, a lot has happened in, um, in, uh, in the world outside the school. So you have to revise it. So we require that all modules are revised 
in at least every five years. And sometimes you have to, to kick out complete chapters and bring in new topics because um, things are changing. If you talk, for instance, about exoplanets, um, five years ago there were far less exoplanets um, uh, found than by now. The techniques have changed and you want to bring these new techniques also in the schools. Now, so far the government has funded this uh, program for the last uh, 10 years. That's going to end in 2016. And, and what we're working now on towards is that um, the schools are forming an association, these more than 200 schools, and they pay an annual fee, and then we keep running uh, the whole uh, subject. Because different from physics, or mathematics, or chemistry, or, or biology, we are not supported by one specific professional uh, organization. If anything happens to physics education in my country, the Dutch Physical Society jumps on it, uh, phones the, the minister, uh, 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 goes around, writes articles in newspapers, so re they really support the physics. And the same with mathematics. But if you are interdisciplinary, in fact you have to be supported by, by all of them, but sometimes they are waiting too long in order to support you. Now that's the situation so far. Um, if you are interested, uh, we, we have a, a website where you find lots of materials, but I understand your Dutch is not very good at the moment. Um, so we have a, an English section on the site, this one. If you're interested in the ideas of the modules uh, within this site, you find a short description of the certified modules as we had in 2013. If you want to know more, you can contact me, or if you, if you don't like me, you can also contact the, the NLT office, and they will help you further. And, and this is what I would like to present you. I'm, I'm here the whole day. I'm uh, quite willing to talk with you uh, about this in, uh, in, in more smaller settings. Um, and I don't know, there's no time for questions? It's okay. Thank you. Then it's okay. Thank you. So, schools who are working with this curriculum, uh, and when students come to the end of the course, how do they manage to uh, have the equivalent of the, um, the other curriculum, the, 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 the normal, <coughs> so-called normal curriculum? Yeah. Um, <coughs> how do you give them credits and all that? How do you manage? Uh, of course, the, the, the students um, are examined. Um, but I think different, it's different from physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, where they have partly a school exam, partly a national exam, uh, here they only have a school exam. And the school exam is in fact uh, taken in most cases after each module there is a, a, an examination of the students. Uh, sometimes the students also have to, to do a, a research uh, project themselves within this uh, program. And that's assessed. So the assessment is not one final examination. The assessment is in fact um, uh, uh, a combination of assessments throughout the years. And we, we require the schools not only to set uh, written questions, but also uh, a kind of assignments where they have to, to do writings or where they have to give presentations. So uh, a, a combination of, um, of assessment items uh, we are using uh, in the assessment. And they have a, a final mark, which is on their, um, on their diploma, which they get at the end of high school. But this is an alternative path for some students to finish the secondary school, or is it something they do and plus uh, besides their normal curricula? Yeah, the, uh, all the students they they have they have uh, a set of uh, mandatory subjects they they all have to do, which I I said right in the beginning. But they also there are two subjects uh, free uh, of choice for them. One has to be out of the sciences if they take the science stream. One is completely open. So there, there are students who are so interested in STEM that they, they opt for advanced mathematics and NLT. Okay. Or they take IT and NLT. Okay. But they, are also, uh, they can also choose uh, Latin and NLT okay. or uh, Latin and IT. Uh, okay. That's possible. For me, is, uh, you said that some of the modules are available in English. Yeah. Does that mean that classes are taught in English for those modules? Now, we, we have in, in my country a lot of bilingual schools, but they, they teach only bilingual in 
uh, in junior secondary um, because the, the national examinations are all in, in Dutch. Um, so um, there are a few international schools who, who use some of the modules, but at, at the moment um, we, um, we translated these modules just to show what we are, what we are doing, the, 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 the level, the depth, because it, is quite, uh, it goes quite deep, these modules. They're quite difficult. In the beginning, some students might opt for this subject because they think, oh, that's easy, you know, and hard and just interesting. But then they really have to go into depth. Um, so some drop out because it's too difficult for them. It's, it's challenging, and that's, that's what we want them to do. If this experience, you have it running in another country or not? If you have already done it in another country? No. Um, we, 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 we do not try to, to conquer the world. Um, what, we, what we try to do is to show what we are, what we are doing. <coughs> and, and I think it's possible in adapted form to take it over. Because already you find some schools in my country, for instance, who, who do not take the full NLT course, but they have special programs for talented students in their school. So they, uh, for, for groups of students who are talented, they get additional lessons yeah. in these modules. So th there's a whole variety of ways in which you can use it. Uh, what I do hope is that other countries are taking it, uh, taking it up. Um, I, I have given presentations at international conferences, and sometimes I get the reaction, oh, this is impossible in my country because the teachers don't, cannot cooperate with each other within one school. Because they, they defend their own subject and they're afraid that if you are teaching NLT, it goes at the expense of the hours for physics or mathematics. Or, so then they feel themselves competitors instead of uh, cooperators. Yeah. So you need to set the setting in the school that it's possible to do this and that teachers don't feel themselves as, as competitors. Because we have a, a, a special... Um, I'm sorry. We have... Um, I didn't, I, uh, I didn't see the, modu the modules yeah. you were at first, but we have um, a school which is called Scola de Pont, where, where the, t the, um, the students can go from one subject to other subject and they choose what they are learning. Okay. But uh, it's one, in a, one case in a million. It's not the normal school in Portugal. Uh, so that's why I wanted to know if you had already experienced, uh, done something in other countries to see how they adapt uh, to your, to your no, model. I, I think we're still quite unique in this way here. Yeah. 